All right, so in this exercise, we're going to need to install the R package called SciUseHet. And that's going to scan whether or not a review in our particular data set was a positive review or a negative review instead of having to read through all the text that a particular reviewer put out there, we'll have this R package scan all the text and assign it as a negative, neutral, or positive score. So let's get started by installing the R package, sci use het. Install dot packages, open paren, single quote, sci use het. Single quote, closing paren. And I'll just fast forward while this installs. Okay, so the package has installed and now we're ready to hop back into Tableau. All right, so like I mentioned before, this is an exercise that showcases Airbnb properties along with all the reviewers that reviewed that property. We don't have an overall review score so we're going to be using the comments field, which is free form text, and then generating whether or not it's positive or negative using the R package. So I use it. So let's get started by just looking at the top 10 listing IDs based on the number of records. So we'll go ahead and add listing ID onto our canvas and then number of records. Change this to a bar chart so we can easily see. And let's do a descending sort. So here we can see that there are a total of 5,067 properties. And we're just gonna be focusing on the top 10, just because it's such a large data set, it's gonna take R a long time to read through all that text and then spit out whether or not it's positive, negative, or neutral. So let's select these top 10, and the list should stop at the number 68 here. And then we'll just hover over one of the bars and do keep only. So now we have the top 10 most reviewed properties with an Airbnb. The next step is to take the review ID and drag that onto the detail shelf. Here we can see all the individual reviews that have taken place for a given property. Each of these boxes is its own review. And the goal of this exercise is to actually color each of these boxes green if it's positive, red if it's negative. So now we'll need to create another polarity field for this data set. So come over to the calc fields dashboard. Let's copy the polarity code. Create our new calculated field. Polarity. And make sure you're using the comments field right here comments apply okay let's also drag the comments field onto detail so now we hover over we can see the actual comment that the reviewer left for that property all right so we have our polarity field and before we drag this onto color to light up these boxes let's pause the data set we'll drag it onto color and now we'll right click and change the compute using to comments because we care about computing this particular R package on the comments, not so much on the listing ID or the review ID. So select comments and then press play. And this might take a little bit of time to run. So I'll go ahead and just fast forward the video. All right, so that took a few minutes to run and now we have our results. The next step is to update these colors so it's a bit more intuitive just looking at this chart because right now neutral is red, positive is teal. So let's update these by right clicking and choose edit colors. We'll click on positive click on green, neutral, gray, negative, red. So the null just means it wasn't able to derive a score. And oftentimes this is because 
there are a whole bunch of characters in there that really throw off the R package. And it's like, hey, I can't do anything with this. So let's hit apply. Okay. All right. So why don't we just keep the nulls as blue for now and leave them in our data set? Because if we go ahead and exclude it, it's going to, again, take around five to 10 minutes to re-render the visual. So we'll leave them for now, but go ahead and exclude them if you wish. So right now it's not completely clear as to how much of the total reviews were positive versus negative because right now everything's just being sorted based off of the review ID. So the next step is to remove review ID. And you might want to just cancel and then pause. And now let's update the number of reviews to a table calc percent of total and make sure this is using the compute using the table across and that way we can see across each of these listing IDs what the overall percentage of positive versus negative reviews were and now let's just take our polarity and copy that to our row shelf and press play. And I'll go ahead and just fast forward in case this takes a bit of time. So now we can see a percentage of positive versus negative for each of our listings. And because we're visualizing the data this way, we can quickly see, for example, listing ID ending in 325 is the most positive and the most negative is the one directly below, the one ending in 571. So you might want to avoid this particular property. And as you see here, if you hover over this negative review, this user is complaining that the neighborhood was a bit sketchy. The host was nice, but the pictures did not look like the room. The house was not well lit and felt a bit eerie. So the Psy use it R package looked at all the words and then came up with an average polarity and this one clearly was more negative than anything else. And now let's take a look at a positive example. Really nice host. Included some snacks and local beer for us. I'll be staying at the place. Very easy. So the package sees words like very easy, really nice, well decorated, great. And then makes a judgment call that this paragraph of text overall is positive. This might generate a false negative though. So let's pick one right over here. The bus stops just a couple of houses away and for only $3, you can use the buses and trolleys for 24 hours. Okay, um, that's not really helping anyone other than someone looking to take a bus. So let's keep looking at the next one. So this one was negative. You can see this person had mixed experience, confusion, cancel. And this one probably should be categorized as either neutral or positive. But if we start at the bottom of the comment, you can see no complaints here. However, the R package sees the text no and complaints and then assigns those as negatives, even though the English language, when you couple those together, means it's without complaints. So it's good. This is a good example of a false negative. So this one is definitely a positive review. You can see right from the get go, the host was beyond great. And if we look at the last paragraph, we can honestly say we made a friend who became family this trip. Like this is incredible. However, R thought this was negative because that last sentence here, stop, regret, and won't. So clearly those ones outweighed all the great things that happened because the person that wrote that first paragraph didn't really have any core positive words in there. And that's why the R package was like, oh, okay, well, I guess this is negative. So obviously using this package isn't going to be 100% accurate every time just because the way humans use language and a computer is trying to figure out whether or not it's positive or negative. But overall, you can see that the majority of these reviews are positive and it looks like a pretty good balance of what you'd normally expect from a negative and positive ratio of reviews. All right, so this concludes the exercise on sentiment analysis at the sentence level using the Psy Use It package. So we've reached the end of our tutorial on hands-on exercises. I hope you enjoyed the exercises and found them very helpful. 
hopefully you can plug in your own data sets now into all these formulas. So you can also take advantage of the time series analysis, forecasting, clustering, and sentiment analysis. Take advantage of all the code on this website. Try to plug in your own data sets to it and have fun playing with R. Thank you.